I did not go to a target school. I went to a university that is ranked in the 60s in online rankings. I did not have any prior experience, but I was able to land an internship at Amazon. There are three things that helped me achieve that. A good resume, which I'll show you, a targeted preparation, and an in-person and online outreach to people. Starting with my resume, that's a resume I applied with, and make sure to pause the video if you want to take time to look at it. I've done so much research and asked around so much because this is the gatekeeper to get an interview. And after all of that, speaking from my experience, the number one thing that you want to do when you're writing your resume is to condense all of the best thing about yourself and leave everything else outside of it. That way you're maximizing your chances that when a recruiter or anyone else looks at your resume for a few seconds, you have the best chance that they will see something that makes you stand out. Rather than putting unnecessary descriptions or a lot of clutter that doesn't really add anything to your resume. That's why my resume kind of looks half empty but I've always received great feedback on it from recruiters or in career fairs and anyone else that I asked about my resume always gave me a great feedback about it. And that's the resume that I've used when applying for internships that helped me to land multiple interviews. To copy what I did, simply divide one page into four sections, education, projects, extracurriculars, which I call leadership and experience, but I feel that it was in retrospect a little bit too much for what it was. Um, and technical skills. When you're applying to your first internship, you don't have any prior experience. So the most important part is to have interesting projects that don't seem trivial or obvious that can spark an interesting conversation in your first interview or chat with a recruiter. The key thing is that you don't add something that you have done at school, like these projects that you do in a data structures class, which many students put on their resume and they all kind of sound the same. There are many interesting such projects that you could follow for tutorials on YouTube for how to do. That's exactly what I've done for my second project. But what matters is how you describe these on your resume after you've done them. As you can see, the bullet points show first some technical achievement to show that you have basic technical aptitude. And second, a concise description for the project either being delivered successfully or working. Don't overthink this part. Browse for coding projects on YouTube or on Google and see something that you can describe in an interesting way in two or three bullet points like I have done in my resume. And then if it looks good, then go ahead and actually implement the project. If you have any related extracurriculars, make sure to put them down. However, it's perfectly fine to skip this section because it's not necessary and no recruiter that is looking for a candidate for a software engineering internship is going to determine whether you're a good or a bad candidate based on that section. Write down the technical skills that you have. Make sure to include some programming languages and tools or frameworks that you have used. You probably have some knowledge or experience through the classes you have already taken, but feel free to put anything down, even if you have a very superficial understanding of it. You won't be quizzed and no one will expect you in your internship to be an expert in any of these technical skills that you put down. Finally, and this is the most important part, make sure to be concise, be organized and put only your best things on your resume and leave everything else out. A glance of a few seconds should be enough for the recruiter to be able to tell that you're a good candidate for a software engineering internship, even though you have no experience and you did not go to a target school. The next thing that you have to do, and I'm sure it doesn't come with a surprise, is that you have to start preparing for coding interviews and start solving lead code questions. The earlier that you start, the easier it will be. There are three key things that you should really follow. Doing it daily over a large period of time, think at least a year, focusing on quality questions first, and doing simulations. The things that we learn and practice during the day are actually registered in our brain when we sleep. So by sitting down every day for whatever amount of time that you can commit to is the important part. And if you can also make sure that your sleep is good, that's going to help easing out the learning curve as well. Just don't be too hard on yourself. Some days you will be able to dedicate two hours to practice interviewing questions, and some days it's going to be only 30 minutes. That's totally fine, so long that you're doing it every day. That's what I have done back then. I have practiced daily for 
at least a year and two or three months. And after stopping for two years, when I wanted to get back to interviewing, I was able to ramp up extremely quickly and it was not as nearly as hard as it was for the first time. So if you haven't done that yet, make sure to start a very long period of consistent daily practice. I really cannot stress this enough of how important this is. In terms of quality questions, those are common questions and lists that I'm sure you've seen before, and those help you to solidify and build a foundation for the different concepts in the different interviewing questions. However, when you have an interview scheduled, make sure you focus on the questions that the company that you're interviewing for asks. If you don't have a starting point, I will link in the description a great uh, lead code question list and you can check it out. And now for simulations. After practicing for a while, you will slowly start becoming comfortable with easy level questions and eventually also with medium level questions. But your performance when you are solving a question on your own is a little deceptive because in a real interview, your heart is going to start racing like crazy and if you're like me, that's going to make your interview much more difficult, even though you might even know the question or have an easy time solving it. So you will also need actual interviewing experience. But what you can do for the first set of interviews that you're going to go through is to do simulations and do them through a website called Pramp. To gain the most of it, treat each interview on that platform as a real interview. Ask clarifying questions explain the trivial or inefficient solution, suggest a better solution, describe how it would work over a simple example, implement it, and if there is time, dry run it for testing. If you're attending an Ivy League, you probably don't need to put that much extra effort other than having a good resume to get an interview. That wasn't the case for me, so I've definitely done a lot to make sure I maximize my options for getting interviews other than writing the best resume that I could. There are three things that you should also consider doing. Use LinkedIn to approach alumni from your school that work at companies hiring for interns and also use it to approach employees that are not recruiters working at these companies that also hire for interns. And lastly, use career fairs if your university organizes them. If you don't have a LinkedIn account yet, make sure you open one today and max out connection requests to software engineers and other employees that work at tech companies. Make sure to tailor the message to the person that you are reaching out to. For example, if it's an alumni, you should mention that you're also studying at that university. Just keep the message to the point. Make sure that it's no longer than a few sentences and whatever you're asking from them is clearly stated in the message. Like, a 10 or 20 minutes phone conversation to ask them about something. Most often than not, you will not get a response. But when you do, people can actually be really nice and kind and help you out. I had multiple such cases where it happened. I was able to get an interview for Stripe and ScienceLogic only by approaching employees that were happy to help me on LinkedIn. For Amazon, I was able to connect with a really nice person. He's a senior software engineer. His name is Adrian and he accepted to let me show you his profile. He was kind enough to meet me in person for lunch in the Northern Virginia area since we were both located there, and he helped me by giving me an option to interview for his team for the internship. Fortunately, it worked out without needing that option, but that was my plan B, and I am extremely grateful for Adrian's help four years ago. Fast forwarding to today, we even made plans to grab lunch when he comes to visit New York. For career fairs, make sure to go to as many booths as you can. Have resumes in your backpack, but don't wave it with your hand and try to force it to recruiters or employees that you come and talk with. Simply introduce yourself, ask a few questions to the uh, recruiter or the employee, ask them what interns usually do at the company, be genuine and as attentive as you can in the conversation. At the end, describe yourself in a sentence Make sure to say that you would love to be considered for the internship and ask what would be the next steps. Make sure to keep the conversation short. It's not a personal meeting. Don't go for more than two to three minutes. And when you're done, thank them and go to the next booth. The good news are that after you get your first internship, getting interviews for your next internship or for your first full-time job is going to be an order of magnitude easier. Until then, be extra resourceful. If the front door is closed to you, 
Find the ladder and enter through the window. Do not accept no as a final answer. I'll see you next time. Bye.